Welcome back to Give Me Five with Jones and Eli. Eli, do you buy into astrology? First of all, the name is really confusing because anytime somebody says astrology, I get confused with astronomy. And I understand that there's a sure. the stuff the the, the the root of the word is astro, right? Houston Astros, space. You're talking about stars and stuff like that. But it's just really confusing. Um, no, I don't buy into it. And I think anybody who buys into it, including you listen, you're an idiot. You are an idiot. And I will continue saying that forever. What it makes no sense. The idea that people are the same or have similar tendencies or qualities based on the date that they are born, not the year, not the time period, the day of the year, like where the moon is and where the sun is. And the star. It makes no sense. You're telling me I have somebody more in common with somebody born 8 million years ago, also born in my month, than somebody born like five days after me, but happens to be in a different month? What? Yeah, I don't really know what it is, to be honest. I... I think, wow, what a booming business that they got going there. They were able to profit off stars and months and get people to believe that, you know, if you're both born in March, you have a more tendency to be loyal or whatever it is. Yeah, I don't buy into it. And you know what? I think it's a huge red flag for the people that do. Because I know there are plenty of people, like, when they're picking out a relationship, they're like, oh, our star signs are not compatible. Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like... You don't say, oh, we had a great conversation. Maybe we're compatible. Or, oh, we this is not working at all. It's like, ah, I, I don't really like this guy. But we we're both born in March, so we're on. My thing with it is it's they, they've, they've somehow figured out a way, and I don't even know how, how to describe this, but, like, that everything just makes sense with it. You say, oh, I'm I'm annoyed with something. Like, oh, that makes sense because you're a <laughs> Libra. No, it Classic doesn't make Libra. sense. That makes no sense. And the thing is, if I said, like, I'm annoyed or whatever. They'd be like, oh, that makes sense because you're a fill in the blank, everything else. Like that. And it all is just, there's no logic to it. And the other thing is people that say they can guess. My favorite thing is when somebody's like, oh, let me guess your star sign. And then it takes them eight tries to do it. And then on the eighth try, they're like, I knew it. You just give such, you know, this energy. <laughs> I'm like, you didn't fucking know it. It took you eight tries. Stop making stuff up. You were always a Sagittarius. They they, exactly. they knew it. They knew it. It took a little bit. I think it's a good conversation starter. You know, you think about maybe it's a slightly more interesting conversation than like any other of the commonalities. Like I'd rather probably talk about star signs with somebody than talk about the weather. I think that's the worst common conversation topic. So I think if anything, it serves as a way for human connection. And again, it, it generates money. I'm sure people invest in these like Zodiac things or whatever it is. What like they I, I like these subscriptions to websites and stuff oh, that tell uh, you what you're going to do the next day. Like I could tell you what you're going to do the next day. Like I, I'll give you a, a little fortune or something at the end of the day. Uh, I, I cannot believe how susceptible we are to being into the future. We're so into the idea of being able to control the future. And I just don't think it works. Well, it's kind of like fortune cookies. I never understood fortune cookies either because no, that, no, that, no, no, no. That, and, for, and let me just say one thing about fortune cookies. They're not fortune cookies. They should be called weird, generic, basic saying cookies. That's what they are. They don't tell you your fortune. They give you some weird, like, proverbial advice, and it doesn't ever mean anything. No, no, Elias. That's not how fortunes work. It's not going to say, like, tomorrow you're going to receive $5 here and then follow this down a path and there'll be a bag of a million dollars for you. Like, that's not <laughs> that's how what it should fortune say, works. No. But it does. it gives you some proverb, like, success is coming in the near future. and. And often then, because you cast this wide range of possibilities, like something good does happen. And then you think back and you're like, oh, shit, my fortune cookie was right. Like that, that is how they, that is how the business thrives. Why is it called a fortune cookie though? Why wouldn't they just call it like a proverb cookie? Because it sounds better. It's, it, does it? It's just misleading. Uh, what? A, a proverb cookie? Who yeah, that'll be better. I would send that back. Like, excuse me, sir, do you want a proverb cookie? No, thank you. I'm you taking can so that. many proverb cookies. Have you ever had, like, you've gone to, like, a fortune reader, but like, a tarot card, like, glass ball, something like that? No, I had a friend who did, and she was like, oh, yeah, she was right on and knew everything. But I'm like, it sounds like she asked you questions about yeah. your life and then got it out of you and then parroted it back to you. I well, would never spend money on that. That's what I'm saying about the whole astrology thing. You're taking full circle. Is like, they just... You know, they like I could ask you right now, so Jones, what did you have for breakfast this morning? And then you say whatever you had, and I'm like, oh, that fits to you because you're a Libra. Like, no, it doesn't. I just figured it out first. It's all bullshit. The whole thing's a scam. But people actually do swear by these, like, 
fortune tellers. I would never personally want to go because I would be kind of scared, I think, to know. Well, I mean, it's also kind of the, the everything happens for a reason type mentality, which I never really believe in and I always push back against. Like, again, a nice notion and way to make sense of the world. But how are you going to say, of course, you can just say, oh, that happened for a reason. Like, or look at something, how it affected something two years down the line, because everything affects everything. You'd be like, that's why that happened. But really, we're just making sense to a bunch of kind of random events, I think. Well, I believe in everything happens for a reason to an extent. And I think it's a nice sentiment to have as well. You're, it is a sentiment, but it is nice to be able to say, okay, this bad thing happened to me, but it's for the best. Even if it's not for the best, it's going to shape me. And where I become at the end of the day is because of this. This has been a Gimme 5 with a Jones and Eli. A reminder to follow us on Instagram and TikTok for a chance to suggest our next pod topic. Eli, thanks for talking. Always a pleasure, Jones. Talk to you soon.